Chris here, and welcome back to another art video. I wanted to start off by saying thank you to you guys for leaving such kind and encouraging comments on my last video. It really means a lot to me, and it gives me the courage to keep doing this and get better at it, so thank you. So today, I'll be showing you this painting of this little girl and her kitty doing their groceries. I'm quite excited to share this painting with you guys because I'm actually really happy with how it turned out, and that doesn't happen too often for me. In fact, I was really dreading working on this painting because I really didn't like the sketch, but, you know, drawing and composing a scene takes quite a while, and I felt I had enough. I had invested enough time into it. I don't like the sketch because I feel that it's a bit convoluted looking, it doesn't retain the appeal that I had intended for it initially in my, you know, rough, rough first sketch. And I just wasn't sure about the composition itself. I could honestly spend the whole day making sure I'm happy with the composition because otherwise I'm likely not going to be happy with the painting. For me, I think a lot of my painting struggles actually stem from my drawing, actually. Um, I think a strong painting is based on the foundation of good drawing. And by drawing, I mean design, I mean composition, appeal, and the planning of the painting. So this is all um, related to drawing, and I'm actually not a very confident draftsman or a designer, so I really struggle in this phase of the painting, uh, coming up with a plan, settling on an idea that I am happy with and that I am willing to invest days into painting. So I have to admit, I was feeling pretty meh about this drawing, but I decided to go ahead anyway and paint it, and I'm really glad I did because, like I said, it turned out better than expected, and that usually never happens. This painting was done in gouache, and um, I actually hop back and forth between gouache and watercolor a lot, and I think that confuses people on Instagram. I'm not sure if I would say I prefer one over the other. Um, I usually go with gouache for paintings that I want to have a bit of a more substantial look to it. And I want the kind of textures to come out more because it's I find it easier to layer uh, gouache than it is to layer watercolor. I guess by layer I really mean rendering. It, I find it easier to render in gouache. And I wanted this painting to have that kind of tangible quality. Um, I wanted the little girl to look like a little figurine almost, a little kind of wooden figure. Um, I wanted the audience to feel like they could reach out and grab her. And that tangible quality is often the kind of goal of mine when it comes to paintings. I really like it when it feels like you can reach in and grab grab something in the painting. I, I don't know why. I, I think it may be a video game influence. I'm not sure. <laughs> Now I'm wondering how you guys feel about how the video has been edited. Um, my paintings take a very, very long time. I think this one took about 12 hours or even more. Um, at, at least I had more than 11 hours of footage. So as you can imagine, it's very difficult to condense all that into a digestible you know, 10 minute YouTube video. I sped everything up to about 800 or 900 percent, sometimes even a thousand percent. I could speed it up more, but I worry that it would just look like a flurry of hands going all over the page, so... So you're not exactly seeing everything from, you know, zero to a hundred in the painting. I hope that's okay. And now to talk about the painting itself. As you have seen, um, I was using the grease eye or Brunei method in the beginning where I was painting only in brown for a bit um, to establish, I guess, an underpainting. And that is because I knew that this painting was complex um, 
it had a lot of elements in it and I really didn't want to mess up the values. I wanted to really uh, make the value groupings strong and defined. And what that means is I wanted the background where the bread shelves are, I wanted to keep that very separate from the front where the little girl is with the mushrooms. Um, there's also a lot of elements with different colored objects and I didn't want the colors to become too garish. I wanted to keep them very harmonious and the uh, the underpainting method is something that helps with that. I have to admit that I actually never really paint like this in uh, water media. I've actually never painted um, in brown or gray, uh, just in strictly in values before, but I knew that this painting needed it because there was just so many things going on and I really wanted that sense of depth between the, the back shelves and the front shelves. So as much as I wanted to render the heck out of the bread loaves in the back, I was very careful to keep that area very subdued and very kind of washed out looking to contrast the front where it's more vibrant, the, the colors of the objects are more vibrant and saturated and the darker areas are darker, the brighter areas are brighter. You have to really decide where you want your audience's eyes to go in a painting. Otherwise, um, you won't have a very strong statement if you're just kind of over-rendering everything in the painting. And I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, I do it all the time and I really wanted to not do that in this painting and I think I achieved that. By the way, how fitting is this music for this piece? I love it. It's a bit repetitive, but I, I like the leisurely and quirky quality to it. So this little girl with red hair and glasses, um, I'm sure if you are coming over from Instagram, you have seen her in a couple of my illustrations now. She's actually supposed to be um, a little idealized rendition of myself. That's really kind of embarrassing to say, but I, I like to think that this little girl is me and I'm living vicariously through her little adventures. I always draw her with a little kitty friend or two and I think that's because um, I'm really into cats lately. I'm actually... I started out as a dog person, I'm, I'm still a dog person, I love dogs, but I never used to like cats until fairly recently. So I've been really enjoying drawing her into these cute little scenes. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying it and uh, you'll definitely be seeing more of her in the future. And the little kitties. As you guys may know um, from Instagram, I usually have a really terrible time trying to come up with a title for my pieces. So I asked around for any suggestions and I said that if I went with their suggestion, I would give them a little, I guess, shout out on, on the video. And um, there were some really, really great suggestions, but I, I did end up going with something rather simple and that is, a Day at the Market by Louis Skittles. So thank you, Louis Skittles from Instagram. I feel like I should have been able to come up with that myself, but I didn't, so thank you. I'm surprised I actually managed to talk about the art throughout this whole video. I had a lot to say about the painting, I guess. But there will be times where I post a video and it's just of a quick sketch or even a study that I do or a, just a quick little painting. And I won't be talking about the art as much. Um, it'll really be more to talk about a certain topic I have in mind. I feel like I have to give you guys a little heads up or something of what I'm intending for my YouTube channel. 
I am definitely gonna be one of those YouTubers that are more chatty than kind of more tutorial based. I'm still planning on doing tutorial type of videos, but that's not gonna be the main focus of my channel. I'm even thinking of experimenting with doing podcasts sometimes where there is no painting footage, it's just me um, discussing a certain topic at hand for, you know, 10-15 minutes. Because the kind of YouTube videos that I personally watch, I don't actually watch when I watch a, a YouTube video. I'm always just listening and painting or drawing um, while listening to them in the background. I really enjoy listening to artists that talk about, you know, their experiences, what they're going through um, at the time, their struggles. And I'm in a really interesting point in my life right now. I will definitely get to that in another video because we're out of time. But, but yeah, I think I have a lot to say on the topic of being an artist at this point in my life right now. And I think that will be very valuable for others to hear. And it will also help me connect with you guys. So this is why it's crucial for me to improve on these voiceovers because I intend on being very, very chatty on these videos. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching my second YouTube video. I hope it was a more pleasant experience this time around than the first one. At least it was for me anyway. And if you guys are interested, you can find prints of this painting on my website. Links will be down below. Alright, well have a good day everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!